let us start doing the uh, tutorials on writing difficult emails. Okay. So, this is something that uh, all of you must have faced. So, we will take one by one, probably we will try to do two exercises. I think I gave four exercises. So, the first email is your paper is rejected by editor, you believe review is not fair. So, you have to write an email to the editor explaining why you want a second review. Okay. Second is you are conducting a conference, you have rejected a paper because it was submitted late, author of the paper has written a nasty email to you and is asking you to include her paper. So, you have to write a polite but firm reply as to why you will not consider the request. You should also write in your mail that you do not appreciate the tone of the email sent by the author. Okay. So, this is the second difficult email. The third one is you want to go for a conference, registration fee is too high and your approved budget cannot cover it. So, you have to write an email to the organizers requesting fee waiver. And the last one is you attended a conference and met some very interesting researchers in your area. You have to write an email to thank them for the interaction. The purpose of the email is to keep the contact alive, but you cannot say I am writing this email so that I keep the contact alive with you. Okay. So, you have to write a polite nice mail uh, about the interaction, but this is the purpose. Okay. So, so, these are the four exercises uh, we have. So, so, you can download and I want you to prepare the email because this is email, I do not want it to be very lengthy. Okay. In each case, uh, it can be about 5 to 10 line emails and we will take some sample emails uh, from you and we will also ask some of them to comment on the email and then I will give my comments. So, this is the exercise we are going to do. So, I want you to prepare the email and once you have one email at least ready to raise your hand. You can choose any one of them, any one out of the four. Not giving much time because this is part of the online tutorial session. You did have this exercise, so I am assuming that some of you might have done the exercise already. So, just for the sake of discussion here, we are going to take up the emails. So, I am not going to give you too much time, but within the next few minutes, if you can jot down the email then we will take it uh, one by one. DKT Society Textile Engineering Technology Institute, Ichal Karanji. Uh, yes, sir. We have written the email okay. uh, regarding rejection of paper. Rejection of paper. Okay. So, can you read it out for me so that I will write it down, so it will be projected to everybody. We can discuss the email then. Hi, greetings, sir. Dear editor, I have submitted a research article. First is hi greetings. Hi greetings, dear editor. Dear editor. Okay, dear editor. I have submitted a research article. I have submitted a research article. A research article. Mm -hmm. Entitled. Entitled. A review of industrial Zigbee. A review of industrial industrial zigbee industrial i didn't get the word can you spell it for me please uh, z i z i g g g b double e b double e b double e b double e ah. uh, so yesterday i have received your email yesterday Yesterday, I have received your email. I have received. I have received your email. Your email. Email. That my paper has been rejected. That my paper has been rejected. Rejected. Yep. Uh, so here, I want to request you that. Here I want to request that. Request you that. That I have checked. I have checked. 
all the guidelines all the guidelines all the guidelines mentioned by you mentioned, mentioned by, by you. you and also i have checked the plagiarism also i have checked plagiarism checked for plagiarism plagiarism so i kindly request you i kindly request you request you to re uh, to review my paper to review my paper my paper please do the needful please do the needful do the needful thank you that's all thank you okay thank you so i want the other colleges now to go through this email that is available on your whiteboard okay please read this email and if you are ready for comments raise your hand silicon institute of technology are you ready for interaction uh, well this email what has happened and doesn't really relate to what needs to be done okay structurally uh, there are some words which should not be there mm -hmm. uh, for example i cannot kindly request mm. that's okay. out of place okay and uh, the reason uh, how i relate to the rejection is not cited so again my reason for requesting a recheck or a review again mm. does not really find a basis in this mail okay checking for plagiarism i mean these are already checked uh, initially before submission and all okay so even in spite of that if it is rejected many of the sentences seem to be out of place just needless in this case okay it can still be a shorter or a more compact mail and more meaningful in the approach okay good thank you very much let me take comments from mufakam jha college of engineering and technology yes sir with respect to the email that has been posted by one of our colleagues of other college mm. uh, the thing is actually when we are talking about it mm. formal representation of email right we can start with dear editor mm. need not have hi greetings or something like that okay that is the first thing okay uh, next thing is first where uh, can you uh, just post that email once again sir on the screen yes thank you sir mm. yeah so it should be dear editor mm -hmm. after that mm -hmm. because as i have uh, already submitted i am receiving this email mm -hmm. so i can start that uh, as i have submitted a so and so paper mm -hmm. and received an email stating that my paper has been rejected mm -hmm. i request you to give the kind uh, your reasons for the rejection of the paper mm -hmm. because i have uh, followed all the necessary guidelines required for the submission of the paper and as it is my original work mm -hmm. i'm sure about it that it needs to be reconsidered mm -hmm. because that gives a confidence that whatever my research work is there i'm mm -hmm. confident that it it cannot be rejected so that should be stated in the email okay so accordingly after that is stated i can say that based upon my uh, request i hope that you will be reconsidering my paper once again for the review can be presented for okay i think it should be remodified and uh, that is how i think this email can be given because okay. first thing is we have to be authoritative about what work we have done mm -hmm. and as we are confident we should say that it should not be rejected at the first place that should be done and second should be in a passive voice so saying that i request you to further consider my paper for the review should be the final statement okay thank you very much ma'am thank you for your comment thank you sir so swaris college of engineering yes sir actually in this mail uh, 
uh, whoever will be the reviewer start reading that mail and he will uh, feel uh, that if the there are the, these many numbers of grammatical mistakes in this mail mm. how much how many mistakes will be there in a paper that mm. will be the first impression mm. he has started his mail with the uh, sentence that yesterday i have received your mail mm. yesterday that uh, usually we are not starting the sentence with the tense or the time mm. and uh, the request matter is very less so that way he will not may may not go for the review of the same paper mm -hmm. Okay, so we have received some comments and uh, some of them are valid, some of them did not mention some of the things that I have been discussing. So let me go through this uh, email for my comments. Uh, first thing as somebody mentioned, uh, high greetings, high greetings is uh, not something is how you start your email, this is a formal mail. So, this is not how it should be written and as somebody mentioned, the first thing should begin as dear editor. Okay, so, first it should start as dear editor and like I said after that there should be a semicolon. Okay. So, it is important that you give this break or pause when you are writing and then you can say I have submitted whatever and then I have received etcetera and as somebody else mentioned there should be more information on the request. So, when you are requesting why, okay. so I am assuming that when the rejection came they gave some reasons like for example, this is not original work or that uh, this is uh, this is already known or that these uh, experiments are not correctly done for these, these, these reasons. So, when you request for re-review, you have to take those comments and you have to respond to that. For example, if it is written that this is not original work, you have to say that even though these other work exist, they do not look at this particular aspect. I am doing it, so I want you to reconsider this request and uh, as somebody else again mentioned, you can't say I have checked for plagiarism because you are writing the paper, it is assumed that you have not plagiarized. Okay, so, that assurance that uh, the I have checked for plagiarism is not needed, okay, it is not like you write a paper and then you check for plagiarism, when you are writing the paper you know that you have not plagiarized. So, plagiarism check should be done by the other people. I cannot write and then say that I have also checked for plagiarism. If you say that, then that means that you actually plagiarized and you modified the document in such a way that plagiarism software will not show it as plagiarized. Okay, so, that does not make sense. So, you should not do that and then yeah, request you to review my paper. So, is I kindly request is needed because you are just making a request, there is nothing kind or unkind about it and typically the sentence please do the needful is not written in uh, communication of this type. Okay. So, in business communication sometimes you might write this sentence, but that is not what is written in emails of this type. And uh, as uh, somebody else noted, uh, you should make sure that there are no grammatical mistakes or errors. And I also found that there was no uh, signing off okay, with regards or something and then the full name of the author should have been there and then the most important there should have been a subject line that was missing. right? So. So, all this, so, so the subject should be one line and it should have all the information that you are trying to communicate, so that the editor can take a look at the email and then so there should be some with regards or something and there should be the full name and below the full name you should have complete affiliation and information, you are what is your position what is your institute and all such information, because this is still a formal letter 
and all this information should be there. Okay. So, thank you very much. So, this is one exercise and we will go to the next exercise. Some other email if you have it ready, then please raise your hand so that we will take it up. Federal Institute of Science and Technology. Do you have an email ma'am? Yes sir, we have an email and I have written the email about uh, the request for a fee waiver. Fee waiver? Okay. If you please read it to me slowly, I will write it down ma'am. The subject line of my email is request for fee waiver. Request for fee waiver. Okay. And then the salutation which is like dear sir. Dear sir. Comma. Uh, the email begins like this, I am extremely enthusiastic about. I am extremely enthusiastic, enthusiastic about, about attending the conference, attend attending the conference, the conference you have organized, you have organized. We will stop, however. However, the conference, the conference fee, conference fee, seems to be, is, seems to be, seems to be, that it is seems to be, seems, seems to, to be, be comparatively high, comparatively high, comparatively high, that I find it hard to meet the expenses, that I that can't, I find it hard to meet the expenses, I find that it I find hard. It hard Yes, find it to hard meet the expenses. To meet the expenses. Yes, full stop. Since I don't avail since I don't since I don't avail any financial support from my institution. Any financial financial help uh, sorry, support from my institution. Comma. I request you to kindly provide I request. I request you to kindly provide. To kindly provide a fee waiver. A fee waiver. That so that I can take part in the conference. So that I can take part without any difficulty. Conference. Without any difficulty. Any difficulty. Hmm. We'll stop. Then the next line. Regards. Below that, on the left side, I would write regards, comma my name, which is Geetu M. Jose. Okay, name. And the designation below that. Assistant Professor Bizat. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay. So, let us take some other college who can comment on this. Techno India, Salt Lake. Do you have a comment Good morning, on this sir. email? The starting is okay that I am extremely enthusiastic about attending the conference. Okay. But uh, here, however, the conf conference fee seems to be comparatively high, mm -hmm. uh, which is not defined, like comparatively high in the sense uh, that is where I have a question. Okay. Uh, and. Uh, we could have provided a bit more details, okay. wherein uh, I guess uh, like uh, to show my uh, interest in this particular conference, maybe one or two lines that uh, I have been a part of this conference mm -hmm. and it has helped me to enrich, it has enriched me to a great extent. Mm -hmm. So I am, a I would like to join this conference okay. or else from the very beginning, we could have started directly with the thing that I would like request you to uh, waive the fees or uh, 
provide some concession for the registration fees. Mm -hmm. And then we could have explained that uh, why I need that concession. Okay. Very good, ma'am. Thank you very much. So, let us go to Sushila Devi Bansal College of Engineering, Indore. Ma'am, do you have any comments on this email? Yes. So, the beginning is good as ma'am said, mm -hmm. but however, the conference fee seems to be comparatively high. Mm -hmm. So, we are not comparing it with any other conference fee. So, the word comparatively is redundant. We do not need to use it. Okay. So, since the college fee is very high mm -hmm. and I am not getting any financial aid for the same from, the, uh, from my institution mm -hmm. and I want to attend it because I am doing uh, research in the similar area and I would be greatly benefited by attending this conference. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I would uh, request you to uh, kindly provide a fee waiver and in this we can also add that this much is the fee and mm -hmm. this is the amount you know so uh, such and such amount that I can get from my college that, or I can pay from my pocket mm -hmm. or my uh, fund. and. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the amount. So, like that amount can also be stated that how much we are able to bear. Mm -hmm. So, that I can take part in the conference without any difficulty. And this is a, this. I, I hope to receive a favorable response from you or something would be like uh, good. And oh. then the regards and all this should also come in this corner, like it should be left aligned. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. So, let me take one more comment before we complete the discussion on this. Thakur College of Engineering and Technology. Is there somebody who wants to give a comment on this email? Um, I think uh, it's a good mail about the waiver okay. and um, um, the politeness as well as uh, the way of writing. Uh, it was perfect according to us. Mm -hmm. Uh, the only thing that I find is uh, the request and kindly both the words are uh, simultaneously written on the same sentence mm -hmm. uh, where both of the uh, words are having around the same meaning. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Mahalingam College. Okay. Sir, in the fifth line, since I do not avail any financial support, it has been uh, mentioned like uh, in a negative sense, I do not avail. Right. So, even that sentence can be positively furnished, sir. Okay. That is our comment. Okay. Is it okay to say don't in my in the mail? Or you have to say I do no, not. We can uh, even I do not. Do not is uh, better. So instead of using do not, uh, we can go for some other terms, sir. Okay. Do you have a suggestion? Uh, instead of going for I do not avail, uh, mm. the allotted budget uh, from our in institution, so in, it can be quoted in such a uh, way, sir. Very good, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, let me reiterate the comments that we have received. So, the email is written nicely. So, I agree that it is well formatted subject and the way uh, the sign off is, uh, everything is proper. And uh, and like somebody mentioned, somebody was asking about style this morning. So, we saw an example of stylistic differences. Uh, you can either write I am extremely enthusiastic and then ask for waiver or you can either ask for waiver and then justify as to why the waiver is needed because you are enthusiastic and so on. So, this is a stylistic choice. Some people say about the enthusiasm first and then ask for waiver. Some people say about the waiver first and talk about enthusiasm later. So, this is a slidistic point which was made by somebody and I agree comparatively high can be made more quantified. You can say that the fee is so much say euros and it corresponds to so much in Indian rupees and as, as some of the commentators said, you can say that this is the total budget that is allotted for me. Uh, and this is what the travel would cost and this is what my stay would cost and then given this, this becomes too high. So, that uh, why it is comparatively high is uh, brought out much more clearly and uh, yes, so enthusiastic is one thing. You also have to say why it is useful over and above your enthusiasm. 
So, you can say I am working in this area or it will benefit me professionally or it will help me interact with people in the area and things like that. And uh, so, so, these are some of the comments that we received and I think they are good comments. So, but, but overall this mail itself is better written. Uh, and so, it communicates what it wants to do. So, there is some more improvement that is possible, but for a first draft this is a good mail. Okay. So, I am going to take one last mail. If somebody wants to give a mail which is different from these two, Geetam University Hyderabad. So, we can start like this, respected sir. Respected sir. Uh, I am uh, I'm Anupama, an assistant professor. And I am uh, doing my PhD work. So, can I clearly specify the area or uh, can I go for a broad that is for network security? My PhD work in network security. PhD work in the area of? Network security. Okay. So, in my field of work, in my field of work, I am trying to decode an algorithm. I am trying to decode an algorithm. Which has been explained by you. Uh, which has been explained by you. In your works. In your presentation. At a conference, so here we can go over the title of the conference and the place and the area where it was held, sir. Okay. Uh, so, with regard to his presentation. I am interested to carry out an extension of this algorithm with your support. Could you please uh, make a time of your busy schedule uh, to discuss about this? Thanking you, sir. With regards, so if you can uh, give a space for us to write the subject at the top. The question for. An appointment regarding name of the algorithm, sir. Request for appointment regarding discussion on. So it comes with the name of the algorithm, sir.
So to this, uh, I will just add a little more with her. Um, when, you're, when, you're saying, when she's saying in the area of network security, I will also add my professor's name and from the university I'm working at. Because, uh, yes, uh, in the area of network security, with professor so-and-so at, uh, at, at the university, or like at Geetan University. I would add that also. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. So, please raise your hand if you want to give comments on this. UV Patel College of Engineering, Kerwa. Uh, first, she has mentioned that uh, I am Anupuna, assistant professor, but uh, where she is working, she has not mentioned. Okay. Okay. Second thing, and uh, I am doing uh, my PhD work in the area of network security. Actually, uh, she has to mention that doing uh, my PhD work in the said area. Okay. That is a network okay. security. Mm -hmm. And like uh, she has implemented uh, some algorithm mm -hmm. that she need to uh, like explain what the thing. Uh, like she want to, uh, she has uh, mentioned in the algorithm that little bit she has to elaborate. Okay. And further, what the extension she wanted, actually she has to give a brief of that. Okay. So, like the expert also would uh, get the idea mm -hmm. that uh, which kind of uh, the help she wanted actually. Okay. Very good. So, she can request to the expert regarding extension of the algorithm mm -hmm. and uh, would like to get the help from the expert okay. for the extension and uh, request for the like uh, do needful in the said matter and uh, kindly uh, find your suitable time and uh, uh, please guide me in this particular matter. Okay. So she can mention. Okay. So this kind of the things which uh, need to be uh, like uh, rectified in this mail. Very good. Thank you very much. So I am going to try with uh, Dr. D.Y. Patil, Institute of Engineering Technology, Pimpri in Pune. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Do you have any comments on this email? In that one line is not like acceptable, which has been explained by you in your presentation at particular uh, conference, sir. Okay. What is the problem with that line? Uh, sir, the, uh, the which has been explained by you at particular conference, it be su is it sufficient, it seems. I see. Okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. So, let me give my comments. I want to go back to the original question we had because I think there is some mismatch between what I asked and what is done here. Okay. So, let us go to my presentation where I had the question. The question was slightly different. Right. So, the question was you attended the conference and met some interesting researcher in your area of interest and the mail is to thank for the interaction. That is the first thing. The second part of the mail is to keep the contact alive. Of course, that is done very, very nicely in this mail. I really liked. So, you give the area, you talk about a specific problem, you talk about a specific way of extending that interaction. All that is done very nicely. But the first part that I am so and so, I met you during such and such conference and we had discussion or you gave a presentation about this in the conference, that information is missing. So, so the email does one part, the keeping the contact alive part and that is very nicely done, but the thanking part is not done. So, that is first comment. Second comment, like I have emphasized in my presentations also. It is always a good idea to say dear professor so and so instead of saying respected sir. I am also seeing that it is always sir in all these uh, emails. So, so, sometimes it can be a madam also. So, it is not necessary that it is always a sir. Okay. 
so at least in the exercises we should say sometimes uh, respected uh, madam i mean or dear professor so and so okay so that is one thing i think the subject is too long if you write this subject requesting for an appointment regarding discussion on name of algorithm i don't think the reader will be able to see the full subject which means they will not be able to understand what is happening so instead uh, it has to say either regarding this or thanks for meeting at this conference or request for an appointment okay the rest of the details can come in the mail and uh, i also feel that this is a mail where uh, paragraphs will be very useful you say dear professor so and so it was wonderful meeting you and interacting with you at such and such conference uh, i am so and so uh, who talked to you about this particular problem and then in the next paragraph you can say i am currently with uh, working with so and so on this uh, issue as i have discussed with you in during my interaction and this is what i have done and then the next paragraph where the, this is where i want to go and this is the particular uh, discussion i would like to have with you and uh, the other thing is uh, uh, to write could you please take time off your busy schedule to discuss about this i think that is not needed of course we know that the professor is going to have a busy schedule uh she or he is going to find the time if they find the problem interesting and if they want to discuss with you so you don't have to uh, say that and you can say um, could you please let me know a convenient time when we would be able to meet uh, to discuss this okay so that would make it uh, a nice mail so overall a good effort thank you very much and uh, also thanks to all those who have given comments and uh, pitched in but for now i will take a couple of comments or questions any comments you mentioned that uh, you are going to thank him for the interactions during the conference meeting right so is it uh, good to start the mail in the first mail itself uh, we need to have a discussion and uh, uh, is it good in the sense to start in the first mail yeah if if during your interaction in the conference if the professor has told you that okay send me a mail after i reach uh, we will discuss then it is a good idea to say if it was not told it's a good idea to just say that uh, i am so and so i met you during this conference we had a small chat uh, i would like to continue on that can i write to you in detail about this and then write it in the next mail okay so it depends on what interaction you had with the professor but if suppose you had some slightly more detailed discussion and the professor says okay when i reach i'll get back to you you write me a mail it is okay to write the details in the first mail itself okay thank you so nk orchid college of engineering and technology solapur you have any comments questions uh, yes sir in the last scenario hmm. uh, regarding the international conference right uh, uh, in the salutation part hmm. when we are starting the email Mm. at that time mm. instead of saying is it okay to use dear dr gupta instead yes. of saying dear sir yes you should in fact say dear professor gupta Can or dr gupta and we address to the name don't we think like uh, it would be better if we address the name instead of saying sir or madam yes yes i agree with you you should address by name and proper salutation of the position thank you periyar maniamma university Yes, sir. This is Priya from Priya Manima University. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, in the previous mails, so you had noted, dear sir, hmm. you had informed us to use uh, semicolon. Right. Should we use semicolon next to dear sir or comma only? It is always a better idea to use uh, colon after all salutations, but uh, some like dear sir, dear madam, you can use comma also. but it is more politer to use a colon okay some administrative mails you are writing you can use comma it's okay and especially if you are writing dear sir that means you don't know the person 
but if you are writing dear professor so and so probably it is a good idea to put a colon okay if you want to be on the safer side put colon everywhere it is always better to give that extra pass for all males okay thank you very much ma'am so we have reached 1230 this is the time for me to stop okay thank you